Should you cooperate in a federal criminal case? Well, the answer is it depends. If you are going to accept responsibility for your conduct, that is plead guilty to the crime, then it is worth considering. If you have information that leads to the prosecu prosecution or plea of someone else who's already been charged in a federal case, you can receive cooperation credit. The trick with cooperating with the feds is you're not going to find out how much credit you're going to get until about two weeks before sentencing. So it is a leap of faith. But I will tell you that I have been doing this for 25 years and I have maybe once or twice had a client who cooperated and didn't get any cooperation credit only because they didn't tell the agents something they didn't already know about this person or about this case. So if you provide substantial assistance, these are the words, substantial assistance, and that is in the sole discretion of the U.S. Attorney's Office, whether or not the cooperation was substantial, then they will make a motion to the court to reduce your sentence at sentencing. So the kinds of things that you can tell them certainly are about the other people that may have been involved in your case. And it has to be based on information that you directly heard or saw. It can't be something that you heard from somebody else or that you heard about somewhere or you read about online. It has to be something you have firsthand experience. So this person told you something or this person did something in front of you. This is the kind of evidence that they are looking for. So you would go into a proffer session or a queen for a day, it's also known, at the U.S. Attorney's Office with your lawyer, the U.S. Attorney, and the federal agents. And the number one condition to your cooperation is that you be completely honest. So if they feel that you're minimizing your conduct or that you're not being completely truthful, they are not going to accept your cooperation and they might just end the meeting right then and there. And they are going to ask you questions that they know the answers to, to trip you up to see if you're telling the truth. When you go in for a proffer, you need to know that the U.S. Attorney and the federal agents know way more than you can possibly imagine. They have all of your emails, all of your text messages, your bank records, anything else that is evidence of a potential crime is evidence they're already going to have when they talk to you. So if you go in there and try to pretend, no, I never had that conversation with somebody, they're gonna know that you did because they're gonna have the emails, they're gonna have the text messages. The other thing is you don't know who else is cooperating. So there may be someone else that they're talking to you about who's already been in there, who's already spoken to them and told them maybe the opposite of what you're telling them. So it's a tricky situation unless you're gonna go in and be completely truthful with them. And if you have information about other crimes of other people or the same conduct and other people that are involved, you shouldn't cooperate. If you can give them substantial assistance in the prosecution of another, for example, the person you bought the drugs from or the person who you gave the ill-gotten gains to, the person who perhaps made bank deposits, the person who was involved in the crime with you, then you should cooperate if you want to try and get a reduced sentence. And then of course there's the question of danger. Is it dangerous? Are they going to hurt me? Are they going to hurt my family? I will tell you that the likelihood is it's going to be safe. The government is not going to share your information in the discovery up front. Now, is it possible that these people will figure out who talked to them? Sure, if you were the person that did a hand-to-hand -hand sale, they're gonna know it was you. But are they going to do anything? Are they going to come after you? And again, I'll tell you, I've been doing this for 25 years and I've never, knock wood, had a client injured, harmed, hurt, stalked, harassed because of their cooperation. Because chances are, the person that you cooperate against is going to be indicted and they don't want to take any chances of making their situation any worse. But just because somebody is, let's say, a drug dealer or a fraudster does not mean that they are violent and that they are going to come after you. Now, if you are testifying against the Mexican cartel, yeah, that could be a problem. But those cases are so few and far between. And usually you're dealing with somebody much more local, somebody really that's not going to harm you. 
So the question of whether or not you're willing to turn on a friend or a colleague or somebody that you know, that's a decision that only you can make. The question of whether or not you feel that it is worth stepping into this possible danger, again, a quest, an answer that only you have. Whether or not you can provide substantial assistance, sometimes you don't think that you have information and you'd be surprised at how useful the information is. Sometimes the agents, the feds, need to put the puzzle pieces together. They have most of it, but they just have these little bits and pieces that they still need to make their case very clear. And they may need you to testify. And if you have the opportunity to testify, which only happens in 2% of cases, then you get even more credit for your cooperation. So is it worth it? I always say yes, unless there is some tremendous and obvious danger and you really don't know much. But otherwise, in my experience, cooperating is always worthwhile in a federal criminal case. So if you've been charged with a federal case, call me. My contact information is in the description below.